Good day, my name is Peter Sporer and I'm going to show you how to radio control a Class 66. How do you do it? The very first thing we're going to do is read the instructions. So after reading the instructions and thoroughly understanding them, we can start work on the locomotive. In order to do this properly, we need to have a supportive padded tray. Into this, the locomotive can sit and we can work on the underside. This is the complete set of parts to radio control a Class 66 with sound. First thing we've got to do is to remove the fuel tank to place the battery in. To do this there are four screws that hold it on and they're on either side. So there's a screw carefully held in the tweezer and we keep them in a plastic tub and we do the other four now. So there's the last screw in the pot and the fuel tank after carefully removing the little fuel tanks fuel pipes at one end we can now remove the fuel tank next stage we've got to remove the weight remove the weight we don't need this anymore that's discarded the next thing we're going to do is to fit the battery into the fuel tank and this fuel tank has been especially designed for it employing double sided sticky tape we place it dead centre into the fuel tank. Thus. So there's the battery, it's firmly held inside the fuel tank. We feed the wires up into the upper body area and there it is, pops neatly into place. We're now going to put the screws in and you can simply screw them back down into place. That's now going to be done four times. So that's the fuel tank in place. So according to the instructions, the next thing I've got to do is to remove the body from the chassis. It's held on by 12 screws all the way around, four down each side and two at each end. Always taking care not to lose the screws and putting them in the little bin. Well, behind the buffer beam there are two more screws at each end and we're just going to loosen this. I place a small wadge of foam on the side of the locomotive and then carefully remove the chassis from the body and then the chassis can fit nicely on the foam without pulling on any of these wires and causing some damage to the plugs. According to the instructions the next thing I've got to do is to remove the top roof cover and set the switches for radio control. Well obviously we'd like the lights on, so that's on to on. Have it for daylight running. I would recommend you have the smoke off. The motor of course definitely must be on. And this is the important one. We've got to turn it from track to battery power because we're going to be run battery powered radio control. Now we're going to put the on off switch and charging socket underneath the exhaust manifold it's held on rather tightly. By using a screwdriver, we can lever it up. Don't worry, it won't break it. There we go. So this is the exhaust manifold cover. And it has these little catches. And they're too big. Because if we don't file these away, just a little, then they won't go on and off easily. So this should now pop on there, dead easy. And also be able to take it off. To get the we're now going to mark where we're going to put the on-off switch in the charging socket and it's very easy to do. We take a line running along the front edge of there and then straight forward from these little ridges, one there and one there. Then put a little dimple mark and that's where our on-off switch and charging socket we need to drill some holes. First of all, we use something like a 3mm drill bit, just to start. Next, we do a 6 on both sides. And then next, one side needs to have an 8 for the charging socket. So now we've got to fit the on-off switch and charging socket to the two holes we've drilled. We remove the screws <coughs> and they'll go in here. Now 
There we go. All right, well now we're going to put the nuts and bolts on. There's first the washer. And a good way of fitting this rather delicate little nut is to use a pair of tweezers. And that goes on nice and easily. And I always use a flat nosed pair of tweezers. Don't do it up too tight. And the same with the switch. And there we are, the on-off switch and charging socket. Just to finish it off, a little sticker showing where's off and where's on. So that finishes the on-off and charging socket. So let's remove the body. And you'll see that inside there's the wiring loom. Here's our on-off switch wiring loom. This is one of the plugs that we're going to connect into. And we have a lovely space here into which the complete radio control module will sit. It's supplied on a piece of wood which spaces it off and it has double-sided sticky tape on the back. I'm going to line up the edge of this with the cutout in the floor there and just push them together and believe you me that's not going to come out now. This ensures that all this gubbins doesn't interfere with the circuit board above. We're now going to plug everything together. Here is the battery coming up from the floor. This plugs into the on-off switch wiring loom. The power from the on-off switch wiring loom comes to the speed controller. And then the speed controller connects onto either one of these little black plugs. It doesn't matter which one. It doesn't matter which way around it is either. Everything now works. The next thing I've got to do is to solder the speaker plug wire onto the AccuCraft speaker. And there is a superb speaker here inside the locomotive. I can see you doing this twice. There's the red one. And now we take the plug and we plug it directly onto the sign card. Now we're just going to pop the cover back on and do the first systems check to check that all the lights and everything is working. We've taken the uh, manifold off, there's the on-off switch for the class 66. First we turn on the transmitter. We've got the locomotive jacked up on little rubber blocks. We're now going to turn on the locomotive. Just wait a few seconds and now if we turn this one forwards the wheel should go. And there they go. And the other way, they go the other way. The next thing we're going to do is check that all the lights are working. So now we're going to test the lighting and when we go forwards, indeed the white lights come on. This is correct that that one doesn't work by the way, it's the way they do it on British Rails. And then when we go into reverse, the red lights come on. So everything is working correctly. We can even check the cruise control by turning the transmitter off, it continues to run. Turn it back on again and we're back in control. You may wish to adjust things and there is a volume control and I'm going to show you the other lights involved in the setting up now. So if I turn the transmitter on, turn the locomotive on and you can see all these lights flashing. It's now all ready to go and if I start the engine about 15 seconds the start sequence is complete there it goes by putting a screwdriver into this slot I can increase the volume and I can decrease the volume so you can set the volume wherever you want it to be so there we have it time to put the top back on again employing our tray. I'm not going to engage it just yet. I'm just going to turn it over like this and place it in the tray and then carefully align one end and then taking great care that there is no wires sticking out and you have to take great care with this. We pop the other end back in and now we put the screws in. Well now we've got to put the screws under the cab you can either use a tweezer to present them or of course you can do as I do and use a magnetic screwdriver and I personally find that an easier method but you might not have one don't screw it all the way almost to the top same with the next one 
don't screw it all the way stop almost to the top so now we're going to put the side body screws on here I am using a tweezer and once again not all the way one after the other popping the screws in but we're not going all the way to the top we stop short and when all the screws are in as they are right now now we do the vinegar strokes and without force we tighten them all this is just finger tight all the way around so that's all the screws done up turn the transmitter on turn on the locomotive I don't need to turn the sound on there we are one way the other way we're ready to test it in the garden turn the transmitter on turn the loco on we can blow the horn to make sure everything's working and start the engine lovely engine start sequence when you hear the cough it's complete now we move away Note the red lights as it moves away. And when we come the opposite direction, the lights change to white, and back she comes. And let's shut the engine down. Now if you'd like to see some more Class 66 videos, please visit my website, I've got lots there. Lovely engine shutting down sequence. So there we have it, how to radio control a Class 66. If you would like to learn more or to order a kit, then just phone this telephone number now and it can be yours. It really doesn't get much simpler than that.